Welcome everyone. This is the December 13th Open ZFS production users call. We have Stu, Levi, Greg, Rod, John, and myself, Michael. Perhaps others will join. A few of us picked up from last time and commiserated about uh, serving Samba from ZFS and joining to Active Directory, but uh, participant Levi and I had some rather good success with that Monday, and we've been watching the situation all week. So stay tuned for that. I'll document what we did, but uh, it's not super well documented outside assembling all these little tiny notes together. Rod, you had a compelling topic, which is ZFS pool level compatibility during installation. I'm curious what you're facing and under what OS is. Well, as I know you know that I've been playing with Proxmox and FreeBSD and installing them both into a common pool. Um, and, and that's functional at this point. But one of the snags that you run into, especially since I'm now trying to play with Proxmox 813 and FreeBSD 14, yep. is pool compatibility features. I just happen to have got lucky the first time around. I was using FreeBSD 13.2 and Proxmox 7.4 and they had compatible pools. Well, that's no longer the case for me. So um, it's what I found is that nobody's installers seems to have the options when you select ZFS as your destination to set very many ZFS options at all. And particularly, you don't even have the ability to select a compatible pool model. So when you're installing FreeBSD 14, you're going to get OpenZFS 2.2. You install Proxmox 7 or 8.1, you're going to get uh, OpenZFS 2.2 Linux. Um, and so I would like to see, and I don't know how to approach the different communities about this needs anybody that's creating. ZFS pools during installations needs to throw up a list of, of pool compatibility models. Um, the, the Linux guys seem to be a little bit ahead of including the proper list in user share someplace, someplace compatibility. Um, I was actually surprised to go look at the FreeBSD 13.2 release and it doesn't even list itself. Oh, no kidding. No, <laughs> no kidding. Okay. Uh, yeah, so I'm kind of, I'm kind of wondering how happened. did that version of ZFS get merged to 13.2, but not the compatibility feature set in the user share directory? I don't even understand how that merge happened. Was it present um, 13 2? Don't know. Okay. Didn't look back that far. I was just when I went in there to look, I went, oh, yep, not there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So I just I ended up using the, the, the equivalent open open ZFS model. Anyway, if my biggest ask here is is uh, I guess there's only six of us, is what is the interest from the community in seeing that? I'll let others answer before I I go on a tirade. You might be biased. I have a very bad answer. <clears throat> I I typically run my installs from uh, a 13. And these days, I tend to run them from 13.2. And then for the 14 systems, I do a source upgrade and do not upgrade the pool. Kind of a, a, a sledgehammer approach. I mean, I, I run my own custom installer, so it was actually really easy for me to work around this problem. Sure. I'm sure others do not have that benefit. You're in front of me. Uh, I While I have my own installer, I don't. I have not had time to put that into it yet. Um, it's okay. just, uh, it's, it's basically, it's the, it's this least common denominator problem. Yep. Yeah. It's the, the, Alteration of the command is fairly easy. Um, it's probably more work to get the GUI type installers to pull up a list of what the, the feature sets are that you can use. 
Um, I guess I should, it might help if I give a pointer to where these are listed. Yeah, I'm checking user share on a 14 system, which I guess by definition it's not there, but I sure didn't. I haven't looked. I, I know it's different on 14. Uh, yeah. see, where am I, what is it? What am I on here? Am I on some old piece of crap of mine? Oh, I bet you I am. Um, uh, uh, hold on, user point share out. CMS so I, compatibility. I do see a path. I'll, I'll let me punch this in there. Yeah, it's, it's user user share ZFS, right? Yeah, it is. User share ZFS doesn't even exist on a thirteen dot <laughs> system. Okay. Yeah, I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure that's running Open ZFS two dot one, and Open ZFS two dot one had these files in them. Well, then that sounds like a housekeeping mistake versus. But it's a merge. It's a merge issue. Yeah, it's not yeah. proper stuff is getting merged back from OpenZFS into FreeBSD. Correct. That surprised me. So um, I've got to find a window on a 13.2 system, which may take me a little bit. There's one, I think. Yeah. And if you look in. On your 13.2 system, if you look in compatibility, it only goes to FreeBSD 12.2. How did that uh, happen? I'm seeing a little. In fact, it, I'm it, seeing 11.0. I mean, I can show the directory here if you want. I mean, and in fact, is 13.2 running 2.1? I think it's, it is actually. Probably look at it and see. I think. FreeBSD 13.2 is using OpenZFS 2.1 FreeBSD. So I'm giving the file contents of a 14 pretty clean stop install, but I'm profound. I'm curious, is this like, are these human readable? Well, that's human. I'm, okay. I'm curious that that's the list from FreeBSD 14 and that it's missing 2022 and 2023 is years. Okay, yeah. And it seems to also still be missing. It's missing 13.2 and and 14.0. Um which might be one and the same as 2.2 free BSE, or maybe it isn't. But okay. I need to go, I need to get on a your but points. Uh, I just I don't know. If have I, I use twenty twenty three? I don't know if twenty twenty three will be there because I can't remember if it's the beginning. Of, I think it's the end of the year. So technically, the end of okay. year twenty twenty three hasn't happened. But twenty twenty two is yeah. definitely missing. And yeah. definitely, previous fourteen is missing. And I think. Do you have a open ZFS 2-2? Yeah, okay. Those yeah, two are that's there. in there. Yeah. Yeah. And then there's still, I guess ZOL is deprecated for this. And then of course Yeah, ZOL ends it ends at eight, 0 okay. 0.8. There's no more ZOL after that. Okay. But I mean that's a well, I guess this is a ZFS call. So that's that's really a I mean, are these what it's worth if I do a diff on 2.2 Linux and FreeBSD? There, there are no differences, but that's all plenty confusing either way. And if I do 2.2, okay, for what it's worth, if I think if you do it, all the 2.2s are identical, which is slightly comfortable. No, that's not They're correct. Not. Then, it, then maybe it's a wrong upload to the directory. No. There, I actually believe that that Linux implemented a feature that FreeBSD did not. Ooh, I don't know why. If you diff, if you if you diff diff open, I don't have them, but diff open ZFS two dot two and open ZFS two dot two dash Linux. Oh, I, and I I'm pretty sure I just did. However, that doesn't mean uh, they're correct because I'm getting no changes for any of those. So. That's You're saying all three of them are the same? Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, right. uh, 
uh, 2.2, I did FreeBSD versus Linux, then I did uh, 2.2 versus Linux, and nothing is the... I know, I think I'm almost positive. I found there was one one bit of difference between 14, I was doing Proxmox 14 and or Proxmox 8.13 and FreeBSD 14. And in the set of data that came with Proxmox, there was one difference. So it may have been something that Proxmox has done or Debian has done. That could be, or it's it's just not correctly dropped into FreeBSD 14. I mean, something's wrong, yeah. but it's hard to say what. Um, Proxmox to a fault is generally pretty stock. And they got a whole bunch of flack for using the stock Zval record size. Yeah, it's, I don't like, even want to get into the Proxmox installer. It's a yeah. fucking nightmare. It's a Perl script. Uh, okay. So, yeah, if you want to do ZFS right and cross platform, we really want to get that right. Um, well, yeah, I not. I mean, there's been people bitten by the fact that you know they went and did a did a FreeBSD 14 install, and now they can't read their pools with their 13.2 systems. Oops. Yes. So. One, I bump into all that to that all the time. Two, you can take, for example, the memstick image, mount it read only, a uh, read write, jump into the user local wherever a user uh, shared, you name it, and modify the uh, ZFS root. I believe it. I can I can look these, look these up. Uh, modify the shell script that generates it all put in your changes there and then start your installation but that's really not what your average user should do um yeah well that's all mounted well if you're running from the mem stick that's all read only i think you can just do a mount what slash uw i've it's an it's an iso okay uh, no, not that, not the actual mem stick. The ISO would be read only, but the the hybrid ISO would be read only. I think. Yeah. But yeah, uh, let me try to find those. You may be able to pass in an environment variable to override. No, I don't think so. Oh no! Actually, the whole installer works with a whole bunch of set commands, as I recall. So yeah, you could punch them into the user in the environment and go. Um, let me try to find this. I, it, it, it just, it needs to be a choice during the installer. Yes, sir. Not disagreeing. Uh, I'm just trying, I'm just trying to gather support before I go write a PR. Okay. So yeah. It sounds like I've got a support of one. Um, so I will say this, I mean, it's a, I like, John's terrible workaround. You can uh, in the mem stick during install time modify this file and set your your ZF, uh, ZFS settings to your heart's content. But that's really not the way to do it. Okay, so, okay, so that um, I, I don't think you can actually drop to the shell and modify the mile, file you need to change. Ah, uh, okay. The user lib exec BSD install is on a re is on read only medium during the installer. Uh, from memory, I thought you could do dash UW. Does that sound right? I, I, it's not something to test right, test right now, but I recall doing it. Um, it's a course. CD nine six sixty file system, which is inherently read only. Right, but on the mem stick, I'm pretty sure it's a. It's still a CD9660 file okay. system. Okay. Don't make me grab a ThinkPad. <laughs> okay. You can um, you can you can install FreeBSD to a memory stick, and then run the installer from that, and that's just running the installer from an existing FreeBSD installation, and that will be read right. Yours, what you're doing is you're you're installing 13.2 to a memory stick. As a regular uh, file system. Okay. Uh, talk amongst yourselves. I'm reaching for a, a mem stick. <laughs> mm. 
Michael, I just posted the ZFS installer, um, the user live exec BSD install ZFS boot. And if you look in that file, there are many, many, many settings that you can use. Um, I don't know specifically that there's an override in here yet. I haven't looked for it, but um, it is worth reading that file. I'm back for what it's worth, but yeah, you the mentioned file. That's the file used by the installer. Yep. And it has many, many options for it that you can look at and set and do stuff with. Yeah, specifically, you would need to modify the Z, Z pool under bar create, under bar with, under bar options. But I don't absolutely. Know that... So I, I have a feeling your your PR is going to end up being two parts. It's going to be a a change or an update to this file and its call, or and or additionally the actual uh, GUI, the GUI that we that we use for the installer to have a a page to select what your what configuration you want. Well, what I was hoping for was there was actually an environment variable that was passed into this function, so I wouldn't actually have to hack this function, but it, it's not. Well, there are boot, boot pool under bar options. I could probably, yeah. Oh, it's in local. No, can't pass it in. Hmm. Yeah, anyway, we don't need to run off into the weeds on how to how to implement fixing this. I got a pretty good idea what it takes. Um, and you're exactly right. There's going to be two places. The the pool creation function in here will have to be changed to include another variable. And then the, the GUI side of the things will have to, to have an added menu that just lets you pick it. And I'm guessing... Can we stop calling it ZPool? Z root. You mean the FreeBSD default one? Yeah. Well, yeah. Some some crazy folks synchronize. I mean, that isn't the menu. Name, but then they move a device yeah. and it's no longer valid. Um, I'm looking to do that. Uh, All right, I'm done. That's yeah, uh, you do have my support, but I'm I'm not you. <laughs> <laughs> you all. So uh, your everyone else's feedback is definitely welcome. I'm just a moderator here, and occasionally a messenger. I was, oh. I, was, I was hoping there might be some other platform people here, but uh, I believe that uh, Greg and Stu might not be on FreeBSD for what it's worth. Just saying. That that is correct. So it doesn't really affect me, but I support you know everything being consistent and accurate. Well, that said, are you hand rolling your installation? Or are you relying on just Ubuntu or Proxmox or something else entirely? Um, yes. Okay. So <laughs> that said, it, it's it self rolled um, for the most part. Then, uh, how many self rolled installers are in the room? Uh, a lot of hands are going to go up here. So I, have, I have mentioned this in a different uh, chat. Um, I am probably an oddball here. A number of years ago, I made the decision that my boot volume for my servers is a is UFS2. And then I create my, my data volumes are created after the actual OS installation. Um, and the OS installation is typically sitting on a, you know, one or two paired mirror SSDs or something, but it also allows me to to shove and, and move my operating systems around without touching my data. Um, and my data typically lives on shelves. So I, for whatever it's worth, I have found that to be a relatively uh, useful environment. Um, take that uh, again, take it with a grain of salt. I don't know if that helps anybody. That, actually, I did that for a while where I had hybrid UFS plus ZFS installs. 
Yes. That's that's also completely unsupported by the installer. You, you have a choice of one or the other. I, agreed. I I, I, I I have my own installer. Yeah. Are you suggesting that the installer should help you create a multi V dev storage pool on a shelf of disks, or are you just saying you want some form of hybrid on a single device or set it? I, I, I'm just interested in some more flexibility, whether a hybrid UFS ZFS configuration needs to be supported. I don't think so. Cause you basically just do the UFS installation. And then when you finish that at that point, you do, you do the ZFS stuff. That's just, that's a, uh, so I might phrase the question a little bit differently. It would be really nice if the installer would create the OS Z pool as with a baseline set of attributes. Then you create your date, your actual data Z pools, which is the way I would do it, but that's me um, with whatever options and features you need enabled for that particular z pool and the data that will be living on it 10, the, and, and the reason i say that is i have been bitten one time too many by having the os boot off of the the z pools that are where your data also lives um which is why i isolated that stuff out years ago yeah ten thousand percent agree yeah i think and i i think that's that doesn't actually to support that doesn't require any modification of the current installer because you simply tell it to install to either a zfs or ufs system of a small size first and then do your data pool afterwards after you have an os installed i'm i'm even more anal than that i don't put my data drives in and physically in the boxes until the os is built yeah, yeah, oh, it's, yeah. I'm. I agree with that totally. the The installer can take way too long. Plus, it can get the ordering backwards, which is a real pain in the butt. Yep. But it's also the one of the reasons, at least for the UFS installs I do, it's one of the reasons I use GPT uh, labels for everything. Um, well, there's another. Yeah, there's another missing feature in the installer and stuff. Is there's no. Well, it's a general, it's, it's a catch-22 problem. You cannot frequently boot it in BIOS mode, but you need to do an EFI install. And mm -hmm. do not believe the installer actually ends up doing the right thing. It gives you a choice to do the right thing, but you're saying it might not be actually doing the right thing? Because the hybrid yeah. GPT uh, legacy is one of the best out there. That's not saying much, it, but it's one of the it, best out there. Maybe it's maybe I'm thinking it's the other way around. If you boot from a if you boot from an EFI USB stick and do an EFI install, it can end up modifying the EFI partition on your USB stick instead of the EFI partition on the disk you're trying to create to boot. Oh, interesting. Yeah. There's booted in there's which mode? Some, If I remember right, is what I ended up with. It, it created EFI var entries that pointed to the USB stick. So once I pulled the USB stick, those no longer worked. Oh, okay. They weren't so, pointing to the hard drive. They were pointing to my... What a number of the installers appear to do is use EFI manager to decide whether or not EFI is available. Um, and then they that's where they start possibly making bad decisions. Yes. So, so many of the installers, I, not speaking specifically to FreeBSD, do make the mistake of if you're booted in BIOS mode, you can only do a BIOS install. If you're booted to EFI mode, you can only do an EFI install. Correct. That, that hurts. Yes. I've had to painstakingly create EFI US. That's how I ran into this EFI problem where it was it was modifying my memory stick instead of the hard drive during the installation. It, it installed all its boot code on my memory stick instead of installing the boot code on the, the target disk. Right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go into a you know a a, a rat hole here, but Please. yes, I take 
some some small SSDs, throw them into a, a machine, use dev control to turn them into a pass through device, pass them into a VM, and then I do my OS install onto them that way. Nice. Then I extract them and put them into the physical system and boot it up. I've been known I've been known to do something similar. I just I I just use a machine and and create a VM with the image on it, and then I DD the image to my target SSD. Uh, two things there. One, you could I I believe you can use VM run sh love it or hate it to to indeed. Oh, I guess you wouldn't have the install media, but you could uh, do one, do the installation that way if you have the install media within reach. Two, you can boot your fresh installation under the hypervisor just to smoke test it. Yeah. For what yeah. Part. I mean, um, everything you guys described, I do in, in NetBoot. It does, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> if it boots up in BIOS. I do a lot of NetBooty too. <laughs> if, it, if it boots up in BIOS, you here's your BIOS screen. If you get UEFI, you get UEFI options and there's no mixing. And again, I do 90% of my stuff remote. I'm in Vancouver. The servers get built in California. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm doing all of that remotely, trusting that my guys plug them into the right network. If it doesn't boot up, they're not plugged into the right network. So well, this is a callback to a prior meeting. Do any of you use IPXE? No. And then in ports, there's IS boot. I've makes, not used, used IS boot. Makes for some interesting combinations of things you can do. <laughs> there's always, there's it's the beauty of oh, I, I there's a thousand ways to do it, and three of them are right. Yeah. And it's what, and those three are different for me than they're different for John or different for Rod. So, yeah. So I have done some iSCSI booting in the past, but not anything recently. All right. Related question. Um, for instead of install time clean doing cleanup, I've been using VM images to remarkably good success. But of course, they are either mislabeled or poorly labeled. If you have a running Z pool with multiple devices. Is there a way to maybe one by one say, no, I don't want the raw device name. I want to address it by label and very deliberately say, hey, please look at this device by label and only label rather than I know there's the sys control to say, hey, device IDs and UUIDs and all that crap. But is there a way to very specifically say, hey, please retaste this disk and index it this way? No other way. Have a nice day. Other than doing it like by worldwide number? The, that's how, that's that would be one of the it. options to choose from the nifty menu I'd hope to see. Yeah, I mean, that. yeah, and that's the way I always do it, just so there is no, in, in building the pools, not the, not necessarily the roots, but the data pools. You mentioned building. I'm thinking once it's built and someone else kind of screwed it up, perhaps oneself, but can it be corrected after the fact yeah you do a zfs import and then you put the slash dev disk oh, by yeah. id okay on that import path and it searches it from there this is true okay i'm thinking it you know it might need some label cleanup then you definitely need a, a di especially if it's your boot drive you need to then boot to something else aren't there a couple of uh, uh sys yeah. controls or or uh, loader.conf settings to enable or disable the various tasting methods? Correct. And in theory, you could enable them all, but then I'm wondering about just choosing, and I, I suppose the import-d pointing into the correct directory is the, the way. But on a what? running system, I'm not sure. Oh, no. unless you did disk replacements with the path of choice. Just a sick idea. Um, what 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 happens to ZFS if I export a pool and DD it on to another set of disks and then type ZFS import? Uh, it should be just fine. You might have a name. No, 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 no. Like, so I now it. have two identical pools and disk drives in the same machine. Oh, same machine. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't say take them out and put them in another yeah, machine. Yeah, okay. Said, what happens 
if one I of them the one of them will get the original name and the other is going to get an auto generated ID name you will if you you will not be able to import either one of them by name to my knowledge what will happen is you'll import you'll have to import them by ID they'll both have the same ID their DD images of hard drive. one of one of them I the second one should get renamed or not renamed but re ID I, I think I ran into something like this a year or two ago. This is this is ringing big bells in my head. I think I'm I'm going to have to run an experiment because I don't because because to rename it, it's going to have to write to the disk and ZFS should be writing to a disk that's not imported. But it'll no, see it doesn't write to the disk until you import it. But when you do the ZFS import without the name, it's going to come back and give you an auto generated uh, alternate. Okay. This is ringing huge bells for me. Sorry, I can't remember exactly what it was. Uh, I just I just have to run the experiment. I want to see what it is. Uh, and note that the, the VM images off. ship with a little uh, setting to re-ID it on boot, on first boot, for that for, for similar reasons. Okay. The the other thing, Michael, for the worldwide number versus yes. in Linux, there's a dev mapper that does that as well okay so you can do it by the map name so that's what i do my iSCSI pools with okay so you can name them move them around whatever from there So the good news is I have a machine that I can try this installation on and hopefully edit off a of memstick the on FreeBSD the the CFS installation parameters. However, I think I have to turn off secure boot. Just give me a sec. Um, other topics. We covered a lot today. Hey, hey. and. You know, the the Proxmox folks are pretty good about, I think, requests on their forums for doing things uh, better, gooder, differenter. Oh, secure boot on. Turn that off. If, if I had anything I would like to see Proxmox fix is, the, is how many places the word R pool is embedded. <laughs> yeah. Because I actually I actually run Proxmox not in something called R pool, and I keep stumbling over bits and pieces that fall over. Oh, GUI things or otherwise mm -hmm. under the hood yeah, or on the surface. Uh, or current, the kernel install script. So when the kernel update comes out, it wants R pool. <laughs> hmm. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Linux no, I, and init and all that. Good luck. I'd have one other thing to add to that. When, when when no create, longer use I no longer use pool name slash capital root slash boot environment name. <laughs> slash root's gone. There's no there's no reason to have that directory level in anything. So along along those same paths, I would love to see on a Z pool create that if you name it tank, you get baby quit, you get prompted for 17 times. Are you really, really sure? <laughs> yeah. I want, I would like to end this and have the same thing to the name Z pool, R pool, B pool. Yeah. What's the other one I've seen that's really common? Tank and, and ZFS. Yeah. If you name any of these, are you really sure? Have you done this before? Are you, yeah. <laughs> Is somebody standing over your shoulder to make sure you're not screwing something up? You know, that slightly sarcastic, but accurate. Is, uh, uh, question to the group. Is there anybody running what I will call deep boot environments? Oh yeah, like all the the full hierarchy slammed in there. Yes. Uh, it can be done. Oh, I know it can be done. I'm oh, doing yeah. it. Yeah. Ew. Yeah. Um, uh, user and 
user and var and all of those are in the directory of the boot environment that's why I, I eliminated the slash capital root slash there's just no reason for it anymore yep, correct i i boot to a data set name slash f132 and that's for bsd 13.2 or slash um p841 or 831 that's proxmox 831 yeah and under that there's 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 there are file hierarchies Flash home is actually a common data set across all of them. Mm -hmm. I'm working on Debian 120, D120, but I've got some snags. So Rodney, I just tried booting to a memstick image, not the ISO and not hybrid splatted out to USB. I simply typed mount UW and started editing that file. For what it's and worth. type colon WQ. Can you can you write to it? I mean, I you got to modify it. And I try and write it back. Did so many there. Okay. And what what where did the memstick image come from? Uh, download.freebsd.org. Okay, that's a it's a download. Okay, it's official. Yep, I, <laughs> no science project here. So if if you were to get traction on uh, it almost pushed from the open ZFS project, hopefully of like, hey, all users, please, please give some notion of pool level choice at installation. Who are the players we want to talk to? I'm guessing Ubuntu has had a kind of an on and off relationship with ZFS, definitely Proxmox. Um, TrueNest scale folks. Any any anybody that in, offers a ZFS pool install time selection in their process. Yep. yep. Should 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 be asking this question to the users. What what generation of pool do you want? Even if it's hidden in, a, in an advanced secret sauce menu somewhere, it, it needs to be there. Yep. I mean, it's silly that I have to go modify installers to work around these problems. Yep. Okay, Rodney, do I have to share my screen or share my video? No, uh, I, I did it's, WQ it's, exclamation point. Let me read it back. And yes, the second line of ZFS boot is high rod. Okay. Mm, I so go. it is set I don't to boot. like, uh, you know, it's... Uh, uh, it needs the override, but it worked. Well, you had to do a, a, a WQ, WQ exclamation, exclamation point. mark. Oh, yeah. The file yeah, the file's installed mode 444. Four, four. Yeah. Or six, 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 uh, uh, WQ. User. There you go. I wanted to make an emoji. No, I don't want an emoji. Yeah, it's probably a read file. Read yeah. Over. So it worked. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'm I'm having a hard time wrapping my head around how it could possibly work. But... Uh, on an ISO, no way, of course. And uh... well, a memstick, a, a hybrid memstick, is an ISO image with some crap glued in front of it. Yes, and I would not try it there. I did the classic memstick, which is just UFS. Oh, okay. 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 Uh, Stu, are you on the BSD Pizza mailing list for the Portland area? And if not, do you want to be on it? Sure, why not? Cool. You got 21st, right? Yeah, I'll be out of town, as per tradition. Yeah, right? I know. <laughs> oh, that's right. I, I, I should know you'll be out of town. Oh, you would know. Yes. Okay. Other topics. We're at 46 minutes. Just responding to a comment that was made a minute ago. Yeah. Okay. After working with other non-open source operating systems, I'm just happy I have access to the installer so I can go change it. <laughs> I'm laughing as I say that. I hope you guys take that in the uh, the, yeah. uh, the 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 way it was delivered. Yep. Damn straight. I got pretty creative with some VMS installs. 
Oh boy, bringing back memories, guys. Come on. <laughs> Way I used back. to manage back, I used to manage back clusters. So Oh, I'm showing my age here. Does anybody remember three card loaders on the mainframe? Oops. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. You, you need to get your cane out, John. I know. Trust me. Don't don't give don't make me do my JCL again. Ooh. I don't yeah, think every I ever now and then. I don't ever think I did a three card loader on on what would classify as a mainframe, but I have three card booted a fourteen oh one. Hmm. Okay. Which is basically a print spooler, but there is there is no OS on a fourteen oh one. Yeah, my wife was going through some boxes the other day, and uh, she found a box that had some uh, old cards in it, 80-column cards, and uh, she was going to throw them away. And I'm like, oh, no, let's keep oh. those for longer. <laughs> I uh, began togg toggling at the front panel of a PDP-8. Oh, there you go. That's your age showing. Yeah. All right. Okay. To your original question, so if we do have those levels, how are they? How are they? It's just a list of features. Do you, does anyone have tools to parse that? Oh no, creating? I don't think I don't, we don't need to. We don't need to offer the list of features. We just need to offer the list of compatibility. Now. Right, but under the hood, we have to parse it. So no, you don't. No, you, you don't. don't. You just you pass the file to Zpool Create. Oh, you do. That, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Every it's day. A file Got it. Yep. Yeah, it's very easy to do. I um, did not know that. Just do a man GFS dash okay. create and look at um, uh, it's it's dash o compatibility equals. Oh, nice, um, beautiful. Yeah, I was really happy when I saw that that I don't have to drag all those values out and. Oh, nice, 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 nice. I'm not seeing it on the 14 Z pool create man. Yeah, page, but... I'm looking for it. Oh, in... maybe features, ZFS. Oh, Z pool. Sorry. Yes, yeah, it's, it's in. ZFS. It's in. Um... I'm done. What? No, no, I did. I instinctively typed ZFS instead of Z pool. My bad. Oh, compatibility yeah. off legacy file. Oh, love it. Love it, love it, love it. Thank you. And it, interestingly, there it shows that file can be specified more than once. Oh yeah, you might have a little a, a base subset in your organization and add a few overrides and just build it up. I'm guessing. Well, what, what I'm wondering does it take the least common denominator, or does it or them all together? Right. Let's take bets. It ors them together. <laughs> yeah, I think you're right. Hmm. So did we solve it? Oh, was the... I don't think... Was Grub2 in the FreeBSD set? That was another one I think that was missing. That's a feature for of CFS. No, it, it's a compatibility set called Grub Two. Oh, no kidding. Okay. Yeah, it's for because that's what the B pools use. Yeah. So that you can boot them. Oh, um, of course. That, that I see how that would be an answer to get around Grub never catching up. Uh, good point. I think it was not in the FreeBS. No, it's there. It's there. It's in the. It's in thirteen dot two. Okay. Maybe it was in Proxmox. Grub two was missing. Oh, there it is. Fourteen. Yep, found it. Yeah. Okay. And don't get me wrong. Once compression LZ four compression arrived, like life got good, and you know, backgrounded delete, and then most features do not apply that are all kind of vendor created recently don't 
apply to most users. So I would sure love a broader basic set and then in, enable from oh, there. a more a more compatible set. Yeah, like I mean, come on. That what's I, I I'm curious what's in the grub one. I'll take a look right now because gee, that probably solves plenty of problems right off the bat. Oh, shit. That's a pretty small set. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's take a look. Compatibility more grub. It wow. does have LZ4, so at least it has compression but yeah and checkpointing and async destroy and bookmarks it's like that's great <laughs> i'll take it is there is there like you know a 15 features or something like that to i mean i guess that's one way to do this word count star pipe sort dash n <laughs> oh yeah oh uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> zol061 has the least number of features and OpenZFS 2.1 has the most. Well, I guess I'm looking at 13.2, so I don't have the 2.2, but we've only got 35 features. Uh, 2.2, 40 features. Okay, so there's five more added since 2.1. Oh, yeah. Uh, 6.1, async destroy. LZ4 compression and empty DP block pointer object, I guess. Huh. But Grub2 is, is pretty low on the list. Yeah. You could probably use the Compat 2020 as a pretty compatible set. Well, and 2018 appears to be, it's the same size as Grub2. Let me diff those two. Yeah. yeah, my my guess is everything from ZOL 065 up to Compat 218 are the same. 2018. Live list is in 2018, not Grub 2. Okay. Uh, duly noted, I see they don't even have a TrueNAS 13 thing. So, yeah, there's work to be yeah. done here. Plenty of work to be done huh? here. Oh, and dare I say, this should probably have Proxmox ones and just sort of, if you're going to participate, participate. And Well, either. no, because I think is what Proxmox says is is their pool set is OpenZFS 2.x dash Linux. Plus one, as I recall you saying, I could be wrong. Yeah, I need to go look okay. at that. No, no, I don't think Proxmox was a plus one. Okay. Anything else? I think it was FreeBSD. I think FreeBSD may have been the plus one. Ah. Oh, and I recall the wiki having a chart of these. I and I think it was yes. vaguely updated. CFS wiki compatibility. Hopefully, it's auto-generated based on this and countless wonderful sources. But what do I know? Uh, Best. Oh, that's from Oracle. We can't trust that data. Yes, features. Is this a chart? Has anybody tried to find a reasonably minimal amount of memory to run a pool without having too many headaches? Slam down your arc, step one. Well, yeah, but I mean, what is? I mean, can you run with a with a five hundred and twelve bytes of of cache space allocated to ZFS? Can you do it with one hundred twenty eight megabytes? <laughs> If only we had a hypervisor, you could simply test that in using the VM images in a few minutes. Like, I don't know. I mean, for a long time, it was not to try and run ZFS on 32-bit machines, but I did a bunch of that and didn't have many problems.
I'm sure not finding that table in the wiki, but if you find it, let me yeah, know. I'm not. It's I'll put it in there. Maybe it's a fever dream memory um, that it existed. I think you might want to Google for ZFS dash compatibility, the command. Okay. Uh, no. all right guys i gotta run okay it was fun i'm getting that way too well thanks everyone enjoy the rest of the week and are we gonna do next week's with the holidays and stuff oh gosh what day will that be oh holidays next week well oh. we start on Thursday afternoon. So you never, some people bleed that into Wednesday, which bleeds into Tuesday, which means all next week. So oh, okay. keep in mind that sometimes mean it's, means it's easier to attend for people rather than harder. So sure. there's that. Uh, I'm planning to just schedule it and see who shows up. Okay, show me what you type, please. Will, will it be at 1 o'clock in the afternoon Pacific time again, or will it be back at 10 o'clock? Oh no! I've 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 concluded that changing schedules is like a cascading problem, especially then along come time changes. Yep. And so, yeah. No um, insulation or no fire. Then people are on autopilot, so they just show up Thursdays. Okay, so uh, clockwork. Go ahead. Well, anyway. Well, I'll throw this out there. Please. I have really, really high hopes of next week putting together a zone minder under beehive uh, arrangement. Good. So so I, if I'm there, I'm sure I'll have all kinds of weird oddball questions. <laughs> it may not be ZFS related, but I'll be there. Yeah, why is it keep? Well then, Rob, that answers your question. <laughs> be there or be square. Thank you, everyone. Uh I'll be around, but I forget about this meeting because it's okay. it's late in the day, and I'm all done with phone calls by this time. He talks way too much. Uh, yeah. No, cool. Greg, you wanting to be muted? Is that for us? Anyway, oh, I'm going to call yep. it at uh, two o'clock. Have a great one, everyone. Yeah, you too. Take care. Bye. Bye. Thank you.